One of the co-authors of that study, Jim Spellman, was telling us in his report, calls this an epidemic in slow motion. Professor Richard Pito so says there is a simple reason. Chinese men are affected more than women. Well, because the men smoke. If you don't smoke, it doesn't kill you. If you stop smoking, it doesn't kill you. And although women born in the 1930s, so the grandmothers, if you like, um, about 10% of them smoked. By the time you get to women born in the 1960s, there's only about 1% of the women born in the 1960s took up smoking. And if you don't smoke, it doesn't kill you. So I don't know why that change took place. But in men, there's just been more and more smoking of cigarettes starting at a younger and younger age, whereas among women, the opposite has happened. It may not last, but that's what's happening for the moment. And so for, until 2050, it's going to be the men dying, not the women. Uh, Professor, talk to us about the benefits of quitting smoking earlier on in life. It can save lives. Oh, yeah. What's happened in rich countries is lots of smokers have stopped. Now, if you look in Britain, two-thirds of the smokers have stopped and two-thirds of those who still smoke, so they wish they didn't. Now, in China, there haven't been so many people who stopped, but among those who did, those who just stopped, not because they were already ill, but just they stopped because they didn't want to smoke, then you found that they got death rates very like the non-smokers. If you stop before the age of 40, preferably well before 40, then you'll avoid more than 90% of the risk. And the people who stopped at about 30, they'd avoid about 97% of the risk. They're pretty well like non-smokers. So stopping works. Even later on, it works. But the earlier you stop, the better. And what you don't want to do is to wait till you've got some fatal disease like lung cancer before stopping. And why do you think rates of smoking in developed countries are falling compared to developing countries like China? Why is that? Well, we've had much more information. In the 1960s, in America, in Britain, the doctors started to say, look, this is serious. Then by the 1970s, the journalists, the TV programs were saying, this is serious. And it's just got through to the population. First, professionals stopped then the skilled workers and then the unskilled workers have cut down a lot on what they smoke. And that huge decrease in tobacco consumption is now turning into a big decrease in tobacco deaths in America and in Britain. But while we've been having a big decrease in tobacco deaths, the Chinese have been having a big increase in tobacco deaths. Chinese men are 8% of the world's population, but they smoke 40% of the world's cigarettes. And the government in China has spent a huge amount on health care, on sort of paying for health services for people. They actually want people to be healthy. And this is the biggest single thing that is making people unhealthy in China. I think what was needed, we had to have Chinese evidence on Chinese deaths for it to be convincing. And we've now got this. It's absolutely definite. And I think that a lot of people, a lot of individuals will take notice. And I think many people in the government will take notice. And Professor, finally, what is your message to these young people who know the dangers, they know the risks all too well, and they continue to smoke? Well, I think young people will do things like this. I think it's as you get a little bit beyond being young, as you get into your 20s, if you start having kids, um, as you get into your 30s, you're thinking, look, wait a minute, I've had an appreciable fraction of my life. You start realizing that life isn't forever. And you don't want to die before you're old. Death in old age is inevitable. Death before old age is not. And the biggest single cause of death before old age in Chinese men is going to be smoking. 